Here, in a great London hospital, a surgeon is operating on a girl's heart. Ten years ago, such an operation would have been impossible, and the patient would have had no hope. Now, this hole-in-the-heart operation is performed many times every week. To aid the surgeon are the skills and knowledge of many people. The anaesthetist enables the patient to endure protracted surgery in comfort and safety. Special apparatus had to be developed to make this operation possible. This is part of the Melrose NEP heart-lung machine, which was developed in Britain. It takes over from the patient's own heart and lungs while the surgeon is operating on the heart. And for about an hour, the patient is not using her own heart to circulate her blood, nor even her own lungs to breathe. And here is the anaesthetic machine. Through long practice, the surgeon's hands have acquired skill. Through long study, his brain has acquired the knowledge of generations of men and women in all branches of healing. Father of modern surgery was John Hunter, born in 1728. Naturalist, geologist, experimental genius. His greatest monument is to be found in London's Royal College of Surgeons, headquarters of experimental research and training in the life-saving techniques of modern surgery. Here in the Hunter Museum, many of his 13,000 specimens can still be seen, including the skeleton of Charles Byrne, the Irish giant who died over 150 years ago. He was over eight feet tall. Beside him stands a Sicilian dwarf who died when she was nine. Giving us an idea of their scale is Miss Jessie Dobson, the curator of the museum that includes John Hunter's collection. He showed here how every living thing carries out its everyday functions, how it reproduces itself, the effects that disease or accident may have on otherwise normal structures. Every year, at least a thousand doctors study in the lecture rooms and laboratories of the college. They come from all over the world to learn at the most advanced institution of its kind. This young man is already a qualified doctor, but another six years of study lie ahead before he applies his skill to the saving of perhaps your life. The college, which is independent of aid from the government or National Health Service, is expanding. It recently appealed for £350,000 to complete its rebuilding programme and £150,000 a year to maintain and extend its work in research and teaching. The subject of the demonstration this afternoon is electrocardiography, which is the study of the electrical activity produced in the body by the heart beating inside it. The activity in this subject is passed from the electrodes which you see attached to his chest into that box and then to these pens which you see writing on this moving paper. It is also passed into this machine and into this loudspeaker so that you can hear the patient's heart beating at the same time. Today, electronics have been brought into the operating theatre. This monitor shows the messages that would be passing between the patient's heart and brain. With this information, the doctors can make the artificial heart do what the brain would have told the patient's own heart to do. Dials show the pressure in the great blood vessels and enable the operator to judge what's required. These moving dots represent heartbeats. Doctors from many countries come to watch this operation. 
Greatest boon to mankind has been the development of anaesthetics, which render even the most severe of operations painless. The anaesthetics department of the Royal College of Surgeons is continually investigating new and improved methods. A machine has been developed that reproduces the action and reaction of the human lungs. These two cylinders represent the patient's lungs and this tube represents the airway. By suitable operation of the controls, we can make the patient breathe fast or slowly, deeply or shallowly. Every operation naturally means a wound. A wound has to heal. And in the Department of Physiology, they're doing research on wound healing, particularly on the adverse effects of radiation on healing. A wound first fills with blood clot. Then new blood vessels and fibers form repair tissue. Living repair tissue in these small plastic chambers can be examined through this microscope. Here is the blood clot. Seven days later, this has been replaced by new blood vessels and fibers growing in from the healthy edge. And 14 days later, it's become completely replaced by new repair tissue. The marvelous invention of the electron microscope makes it possible for scientists to see magnified many hundreds of thousands of times the minute structures of the body. This is a normal healthy cell seen through the electron microscope. This one is a cancer cell magnified on the cinema screen more than a million times. The specimens required for the electron microscope must be almost infinitely thin and the specimen cutting machine slices sections of tissue one half millionth of an inch thick. In the anatomy department, students study the structure of the human body. These plastic casts enable students to study every organ in detail. Four times a year, examinations are held. Tell me why this patient had a hemorrhage at the base of the brain. At the base of the patient's brain on the circle of willows, there is an aneurysm uh, between the middle cerebral and the anterior cerebral arteries. The work of the Royal College of Surgeons is a constant contribution to the health and well-being of people throughout the world. The operation has been going on for four hours, and now it is ending. Precious years of life have been given to a young girl. She has suffered no pain. Without the operation, she would have died. The surgeon is the spearhead of a band of devoted researchers and workers. He is the product of the people who trained him. He's a worthy successor to the long line of surgeons that went before him, working then, as now, in the service of mankind.